a simple problem. So let you see how do we apply the simple strategy. Okay, very simple but very effective. Another commonly used strategy in problem solving. Now, later in this class, we will have a few more places we need to apply the strategy. Okay. All right. First, thinking, yeah. All right, so remember, in order to find the number of, yeah, because we need to go through all the possible M strings in a given text. Given text, we have a long string, yeah. We assume there are total N characters, N. In order to search for all the possible substrings matching the given pattern, so we start from the leftmost position, leftmost position. Then every time we shift one position to the right until we reach the last M substring in the given text. Yeah. So that's straightforward. So that's the brute force method, brute force method. Remember later, I give you two advanced algorithms. Those are advanced. You do not need to every time shift by one character. You can jump, okay? So the advanced character allows you to jump multiple characters yeah, based on your comparison with the current character. So very complicated. How do you know how, how, how fast you can jump? jump right yeah so very complicated yeah but here we do not jump yeah every time just move one position to the right yeah. all right the first thing we want to count the number of m substrings in a given text we want to count it okay yeah it's a simple question yeah but we need to give up exact number as the answer okay yeah so let's try this question first okay. all right yeah so every time extract an m substring from the text with consecutive characters yeah and we use the location of the first character of the substring m substring location of the whole m substring yeah so that's our definition how do you define the location of your m substring yeah. the index of the first character its first character okay all right yeah. compare it with the pad yeah every time when we get a m substring we do comparison character by character comparison so, oh, just a minute. I need to change the pen color here. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want to use the red color. Yeah. This color. All right. So look at here. How many comparisons we need to do? We need to do character by character comparison. Total and character comparisons here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But here, Let's answer this question. Yeah. How many such M substrings can we find in, in the given text? Yeah. Given text, remember N characters. Okay. N characters. And M substring, you know, M characters, right? M characters. Using these two numbers, N and M. Yeah. So you know you just move move one character to the right every time. Okay. You start from the index zero, then after one compare a uh, one string comparison, string comparison, you move to one position to the right until you reach the last M substring. Now give me your guess yeah here we apply guess and uh, verify so what is your guess try to get the number 
as close to the answer as possible for the guess using these two numbers, n and m. So what's your guess? n and m. <laughs> That's the first natural guess. Well, n minus m, right? Quite natural. Yeah, because the pattern has length m, but the, that tail, we should, we need to minus that tail, right? Yeah, yeah. When we reach the end, there is long tail like that. So we need to subtract that long tail, right? Yeah, it's the natural guess. But the question is, is this guess accurate or not? We need to answer that, okay? Yeah, so our guess is n minus n. That's, the, we need to do the second part, verify. Yeah, it could be wrong. So we need to verify it, okay? So when we do verification, yeah, here, just give you another idea. So how do we do the verification? When we do verification, we try the simplest case. Yeah, that strategy we used before. And we sometimes we try extremal case, extremal case. Yeah. Here, think about, we know the relationship between M and N, M less than or equal to N, how about we consider an extremal case? That extremal case is M equals N. That's extremal case, right? Think about that. Where M and N exactly same length. How many M substring do you have in your given text? One, but based on this formula, your guest formula is zero. That means your guess not correct. How do you adjust it? You need to make adjustment plus one. Okay. So this example to show you how to apply this guess and a verified strategy. You need to make adjustment. After you find some problem, make adjustment. You use the extremal case to help you do the adjustment. Plus one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So for this case, yeah, the zero, we know the answer should be one. So our final answer, n minus m plus one. This is the way we apply this strategy, okay? With the simple strategy. All right, yeah. yeah. Later, yeah. So here, let me do summary for this strategy later when we apply the strategy all right this guess step very important yeah. because if you make a very bad guess so if your guess result is far away from the answer then when you make your adjustment it's very hard so you want to make your guess as close to the answer as possible okay then you only need to make small adjustment, okay? But if the difference is big, you need to make bigger adjustment. That will be harder, yeah. But the question, how to make a good guess, right? Yeah, we want to make a good guess. So not a, you know, far away, that better guess, yeah. To make a good guess, you need to do some investigation. You need to do some work. Analysis work. Okay. You need to discover some property. Okay. After you get some partial information, property, based on that, you make your guess. That, that would be much better. Okay. You need to do some analysis. Yeah. So I will show you this analysis thing uh, in our later example. Later example, I will show you. So we study some special cases. After that, when we have some partial result, then we can make reasonable guess. Okay, yeah, so we will get there yeah, quickly. All right, so next. Now, when we run this algorithm, that 
that would be simple. Okay, yeah. So here I use the star graph. Yeah, we use a for loop. Yeah. So we take the first m substring, then our for loop goes through, you know, all m minus m plus one m substrings. Yeah, in that for loop, yeah, naturally, natural, in a natural way. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, but here, yeah, let me let me use this as example for another method practice, another chance method practice. Okay, let me ask you a question first. Now, yeah, because the first first position. The position of the first M substrate is easy, right? Yeah. Zero. Index zero is the first position of our, you know, is the position of our first M substrate. Now I ask you a question. What is the position of our last M substrate? Last. Not first. First easy. Yeah. Trivial. But last, look at this. M question, uh, T question mark, T question mark. This gives us the first character of the locate first, the location of the first character of the last M substrate. Okay. But because I do not know what is the number of the subscript, yeah. I couldn't figure out. I need to do some calculation to get this number for this question mark. Right? Yeah. So can we use some simple way to calculate what is this number subscript corresponding to this question mark subscript? Yeah. Think about it. It's a simple question. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. So first M substring. Yeah. Now the last M substring. That's yeah. because if we know the last one, then we know how to write our for loop, right? Otherwise, how do you write your for loop, right? So we want to know this number to write our for loop, okay? Yeah. So any any effective way you can think of at this point. to calculate the subscript. Yeah. There is a Dakota. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, you can do that way, but sub subtract what number? You need to be a little careful. Yeah, right? There is one possible difference. You need to really make that number right. Yeah. That's the hard part. Hard part. One difference. You may get one difference. Now we want to fix that possible one difference. Okay. All right. So here, let me re remind you we recall, we learn. In our chess chessboard puzzle question, what method we learned in that chessboard puzzle question? Which chessboard? The, uh, the, the that uh, domino covering chessboard. That yeah. domino one. Invariant, that's correct. Here, can we find some invariant to help us figure out this question mark invariant now? What's the invariant number? Think about, actually our current M string, we move, it's a moving M string, right? When we move the M string, can you find something that is fixed all the time? When you move m substrate, one quantity 
is always fixed when you move the m subtract from left to right. There is some number always fixed. What's that? The length of the m strip. How about that? The length of that length never changes, right? Yeah, when you move, same length, same length never changes. That length is the m uh, invariant. That length is the invariant. Okay, all right. How do you represent that length? The length, or you can, yeah, actually, although the length, you can, you can use another way. You can consider the difference of the two subscripts. How about, how about that? The difference of two subscripts of the n two n characters in that n subscript. That that's also fixed, right? That difference is fixed. So we can choose that difference as the invariant. How about that? Okay. Yeah. All right. So it for the first m strain, what is the difference of the yeah. So here you can see, right? Yeah. yeah, invariant idea. Difference of two n subscripts of each subscript. It never changes. This difference never changes when you move. Okay. Yeah. So let's use this invariant to keep track of the position for the last, for the last m substring. Okay. So we set up an equation. Based on this difference, left hand side for the first m substring. So, what's that? m minus one minus zero. So, m minus one is the difference. Okay. Yeah. For the last one, the last one, the subscript of the right end subscript m minus one, but we use x to represent the question mark, the left subscript. This difference, a minus one minus x. Yeah. Then we set up this equation and solve for x. How about that? Solve for x. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Yeah. So the answer of x, n minus n. That's the answer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here we get a practice our invariant method so you can see yeah. especially when you need to find some accurate number do you know you do some difference but when you do the difference if you do not use this way you may get not exact number your number could be one away from the correct answer yeah. here using this one when we can guarantee our answer is correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here, uh, this is the third time we use the invariant method. Yeah. Remember, the second time when we when we look at the size of the square. Yeah. Also chessboard question, but we consider size. Size. Oh, oh not chessboard. Sorry. Uh, our Fake coin problem. Remember, fake coin problem. Yeah, number of wings and the number of coins. Yeah, that relationship we use the invariant method. So for the chessboard domino coverage, the difference of black squares and the white square. Our second time using this invariant method. This is third time. Third time invariant method see yeah very useful very useful yeah all right yeah so we find the last subscript index i equals m minus n now when you write the full loop it's easy right from zero through that m minus n yeah now it's easy okay yeah so you, you need this number the range for the indexes. Yeah. So you have the range for the indexes. All right. All right. Then the last thing. Yeah. The efficiency. 
how many comparisons? Yeah. How many, let's say, how many character comparisons? Each, because we need to compare character by character. So let us count the number of character comparisons. Yeah. For the best case, best case, yeah. Only M, yeah. because when you take the first M substrain, you match it, you match the pattern. You get a match for the given pattern, so you're done, right? Yeah. So here we only find the first occurrence, okay? Yeah. yeah. If we need to find all the possible occurrence, then you need to still looking for the second occurrence and so on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So here, for the best case, we just look at the first occurrence. Yeah. Worst case, efficiency you need to compare all the m substrains yeah so try all the possible comparisons so each one you need m character comparisons but you have thus many m substrains so you do multiplication yeah so thus so you get a worst case like this okay yeah all right how about average case efficiency Okay, yeah. Average case efficiency, yeah. Actually, this one, it's easy for the average case efficiency. Because when you move your M substrain one position to the right, you know, the, the change every time you increase the position number by one. So that property is a linear problem. And uh, the distribution quite even. Yeah. So you're, in that case, you can take the average of best case and worst case. Yeah. So this kind of average not always correct. You need to see. So if the you know the case distribution linear and in a evenly distributed linear situation. You, you need to be careful here, okay? Only in that case, yeah, here, every time we just increase the position number by one, yeah, yeah. So, always that follow that rule, yeah. So you, you can see, so we can use this way, okay? Although you can use the, you know, uh, Definition way, yeah, definition way. So adding up the number comparisons for all those character comparisons for M substrains, then do the division. Yeah, you should get the same number. You should get, get the same number. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. So he, at this point, we finish this topic. Yeah. String matching problem brute force method this topic yeah so you can see the solution is so simple so easy yeah but here we learn and practice two strategies or method yeah. guess and verify one another we practice that invariant method yeah. as simple example yeah so give us chance to learn these two methods better. Yeah. Question. Yeah, I think I missed something. Why is there a plus two average case? M times one. Can, can we understand as, because each one has this M multiple, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but the coefficient for that M is one. The coefficient for the last one is this number, so your plus divided by two. One plus this last one divided by two. Okay, yeah. And if another way, yeah. another way, yeah. All right, so let me, yeah, for, since you asked me this question, let me write a little more detail. Yeah. If some of you like to use, 
I like to use um, the original definition of the average. The best case, m times one times m comparisons, right? Yeah. The next one, you need to do two times m comparison, right? Two times m comparison, all right? And the next one, three times m comparison, right? And so on, all the way, the last one, m minus m plus one times m comparison, okay? All right, then we apply the formula, the sum of consecutive integers, right? Yeah, so we know the number, one half, one plus m minus m plus one times the total number n minus m plus one. Remember times that m, all right? But that's the total. We need to do division, division by, by this number. So when you do division, this one cancel out. So you have this plus two left. M minus M plus two left. Okay, yeah. So if you want to work from the definition, you can do it in this way. Yeah. Still, that plus two. Okay. All right, so we finished stream matching problem.